and welcome to another episode of Climbing on the Bookshelf. This time I'm having a talk with Little Peak Press founder Heather Dorr. Little Peak Press is a publishing company that aspires to make beautiful books that take you to the mountains and other wild lands. She is a runner, cyclist, artist, climber and also a full-time mother. She has written and collaborated numerous books including Waymaking, an anthology of women's adventure writing, art and poetry, which was the winner of the John White Award at the Banff Literature Festival in 2019. Her new book, Mountain Stories, is an illustrated memoir of journeys through some of Scotland's most beautiful landscapes. Written during lockdown, she tells these stories as powerful means of reconnections with the mountains when they're physically inaccessible. Heather's journeys are made by walking, running, cycling or sea kayak. These stories are a reflection of importance of wild places and the inspiration, art and culture associated with them. I hope you enjoy my chat with her. Hello, Heather. Hi, Stuart. How are you doing? Hi, very well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Yeah, th- thanks very much for agreeing to do this. It's really appreciated. That's right, no worries. I've seen you on social media quite a lot um, yeah. and kind of follow you and, and follow all your outdoor um, things that you do. Um, yeah. And I thought it'd be great to get in touch with you and yeah. find out a little bit about yourself and how you got into the kind of um, running and cycling and sure. walking and things and everything that you do. So whether that's something that you you grew up with or whether it's something that you've recently got into or you've just always always been interested in that okay um and yeah i mean i started really i started i started running when i was 17 um i used to i started smoking when i was 13 and i was pretty unfit when i was 17 by the time i was 17 okay um and yeah and i kind of realized that i was pretty young and i i shouldn't be that unhealthy really so um there's an incentive you know, to incentivize myself to, to stop smoking. I started running, but and I, and I started running around the block in collapsing in a heap and then, um, you know, extending that every week. And, and, and suddenly it was sure. the day before my 18th birthday. I run my, I run a 10 K and, and I was, uh, you know, I was 18. And by then I was, I was just finished off my, doing my A levels. And I was also, I just started rock climbing. That was, um, that was a really main thing I did from 18 onwards to okay. my early 20s. Well, yeah, early to mid 20s, really. I um, I went up to Leeds University. So I grew up in Bristol. And my the first time I climbed was on the Avon Gorge, um, some multi yeah. routes there with my friends. And then I came up to Leeds. Um, I still live near Leeds now um, in Otley on uh, 10 miles out of town. Okay. And yeah, so it was at university I started climbing and I still ran. Um, I, I ran, you know, I sort of, I've run since, since I was 17, but climbing was the main thing I did. I, so, and then, yeah, so, you know, traveled around the country, climbing, learning yeah. to climb it around the place and yeah. into the Alps and places. And then, yes, and then I got, I started cycling a few, few years later. So, okay. I, you know, I've always been, I've always had a mixture of things. Um, and for a long time, I raced a lot. Um, and I, I don't race really very much anymore i've got two young kids and stuff okay so uh but i still run and i still cycle and i'm i'm i stopped climbing for a long time but i'm climbing again now and having a great time so what sort of inspired you to to take up these these things other than being very unfit i I always it's funny i always enjoyed being it's funny when i was when i was younger my dad used to try and get me and my sister and my brother out walking and Dartmoor, and like I say, I grew up in Bristol, so we used to sort of go to Dartmoor and bring me okay. these places. And we're actually, yeah, I mean, I, we're actually quite hard to get out walking as kids. Um, but I always, <laughs> when I did go, I always really appreciated the, um, you know, being outdoors and the scenery. And I think yeah. there was always a, I mean, particularly when I was a young adult and stuff, the, the, the feelings of freedom, really, in the open spaces and the beauty of it, yeah. that's what inspired me. And also, I mean, yeah, so, soon enough, I, I started racing, and there's a real addict, racing in the mountains. There's an addictive side to that, um, pushing yourself as fast as you can go, sort of losing yourself really in, in, in those times. So, sure. so yeah, that that was the attraction. That was some of the attraction in the outdoors for me, I suppose. Um, going back climbing side of it, yeah. um, where did you sort of learn? There was it down in Bristol, and well, I started. I did my first few routes in, in Bristol on the other yeah. like I say, and also sort of places like Goblin Coombe and the limestone down. Okay. around um port his headway and things like that but but that i didn't that wasn't very much compared to um when I, after i came up to university so um so yeah i mean i, I joined the, the the climbing club at the university and, and soon okay. enough was 
but you know, I, you know, I live just below Cayley Crag now, and that's we used to get the bus out to Cayley and Ilkley yeah. and get the train to Armscliff. And so I learned, I really did learn to climb on the grit as opposed to like, I mean, you know, I was leading, learning to lead on the grit. And, and then, you know, yeah. it, it, with the club, we were heading over to the lakes and North Wales and, and Northumberland and places and, and the Alps soon enough, like I say, in the summer. And I spent my first, I spent a long summer in Pembrokeshire in my, during my, my first year university summer. I yep. was working over there, so I that I spent yeah I had some great times climbing on on the on the cliffs there. So you know UK UK trad really. Um, so going back to say that you've you've got a um, a family now. Yeah. Um, how do you fit all that in with obviously school runs and yeah. or whether you've got younger children or not, I don't know, but no, they're they're, um, they're, they're, they're quite. <clears throat> I'm still doing the school runs. Yeah. So um, how do you fit all what you do in? How is how is that possible? It's unbelievable that you do all this stuff. Um, I do a lot less of it than I used to, <laughs> okay. and um, you know I still do it, and and I and I wake up early, so I suppose, yeah, it's. I think you know I've got less time than I used to now, and I and I, the time I do have to do stuff, I just really appreciate. If I'm going climbing or whatever I'm doing, I I enjoy it. So, because the time's sure. quite scarce at the moment, but sure. But then, you know, that said, I'm, my, my daughter's climbing more and more now. She's really enjoying herself. So Okay, great. So it's great. Like, it feels like it's come full circle a bit, really. Um, you've recently, or sort of a couple of years ago, started your own, uh, started Little Peak Press. Yes. Um, why, did you, why did you do that? Why did why I do that? It? Yeah. Um, I was one of the editors for Waymaking, which um, was published Oh goodness! It was published in 2018, if I recall correctly. So, okay. and then um, that won a prize, didn't it? Yeah, I think. it did at, um, at Banff. Um, yeah, at the Mountain Literature Prize uh, in 2019. So, yep. so yeah, I was I was one of the editors of Waymaking, and and um, Waymaking is an anthology of um, of women's writing and artwork okay. and, and, and photography inspired by mountains and wild places, and and um, yeah, one one of the things with waymaking, one of the reasons I think it won the prize it did, and and and, yeah. and it's been well received, is the fact it, it's a it's a real mixture of things. We, when so you know, I worked on with I worked on a book with with Helen Mort, with Claire Carter, with Camilla Barnard, and okay, yep. and we did the call out for um, contributions to, to waymaking. We we went out of our way not to be prescriptive about what people could. What, and and it was it was for women what, what women could could contribute. It was long you know as long as you could go in a okay. book then you know please submit it and and as such it was such yeah. a mix of real um you know there's poetry prose artwork photography and cartoons and, and all kinds of different okay. stuff and it was it was such a rich mixture that you know, when I so yeah it's a very inspiring book and to be clear it, I sort of kind of realized not I, I wrote a blog about it actually and it's kind of the blog point people out when they ask me why I started this <laughs> peak press yeah, because sure. you know I, I came to the conclusion with the help of my partner not, not long after it was published that with the reception it got yeah. but you know yeah it was a it was a book by women but actually it's content you know men are just as likely or you know anyone any any person is just as likely to to to, to sort of create content like it or whatever and 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 that's what you know so I just wanted to explore that some more and I suppose what well, I mean, one of the comments about Waymaking is that it wasn't really driven by ego or a summit push or or any of the sort of classic things. You know, there's there's a lot of great mountaineering books out there, but there's, you know, a lot of it is about the summit and stuff. And, and But this often generally really wasn't about summiting a peak. It was about the sort of exploring around the mountain or the sort of sensuality of, of the place. And the feeling um, that you have yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so, you know, that's what, and so really what I wanted to do was explore that some more and okay. and you know and yeah and I started off I mean most of the book yeah the majority of the books must be published so far have been by me or co-authored by me but increasingly um I'm you know uh, publishing books by other people and, and you know we're a small press we're never going to be particularly big okay. uh, and I don't mean you know I'm, I'm like feel negative about that we'll probably publish two or three sometimes one book a year yeah um and it may grow, but at the moment it won't. And um, but yeah, I'm mean, exploring that and having a, an interesting time doing it and meeting some very interesting people. Yeah. With, you know, lots of creativity about them and, and great ideas. Yeah. So is it just you that that 
kind of runs the company? Uh, it or... is. I mean, it's a, so I work with uh, Joe Allen, who's our editor and proofreader, and then Rhiannon Hughes, who, who runs her own design company in Otley. So it's, actually, it's very Otley. Um, yeah. very Otley centric company yeah Rhiannon's a great fantastic designer and, and very creative and, and Jo is just a, a, a she's she's brilliant she's been a um yeah she's she's great as Jo she's so not only she's a very good editor and, and, and proofreader she, she's just very supportive um so what are with with Little Beat Press yeah. um what are the kind of short and long-term uh goals that you've got for the, the press um it's interesting. So, uh, you know, I started it off with you know, the, the the purpose was to to explore, like I say, to to explore that sort of area of, of publishing. You know, yeah. some more. Um, what are my long term aims? Uh, my short term aims are to keep making books. And so, yeah. you know, it's not next year. We've we've got um, Faye Latham's first first collection of poetry coming out, and that that is superb. And I'm okay. very excited about that. And you know, there's a couple of other things going on that I'll be ready to talk about in a while. Yeah, sure. Um, but yeah, so that's the short term aim: is keep me making books. So the short term yeah. aim is to is to keep making enough money to keep making some more books. It's not exactly a you know small, yeah. small publishing isn't. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not. But, you know, there are, there are easier ways of um, making money. Let's put it like that. Um, yeah. So it's not really about that. I mean, and what's the longer term? I haven't at the moment. As you, you said, Stuart. I'm, you know, pretty busy person. I haven't got a huge amount of capacity, so yeah, it's just to keep going like that. And, and yeah, if it doesn't good. fold, yeah. then that'll be an achievement. Then that'll be a bonus. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. So it's to keep making books. Said that you were involved with, well, no, the way the way making book yeah. um, when it won the Banff Mountain Literature yeah. for nonfiction. I recently saw that you went over to Canada. Yeah, and how did you get chosen to be on the judging panel? And and was it fun? Um, well, yeah, so I was on the judging panel this year. Um, I'm not sure how I was chosen, but I imagine the fact that <laughs> we're making won a prize a couple of years ago had something, okay. you know, was part of it. Uh, I was on a panel with you know, three with, with Bernadette McDonald and Pete Takeda. It was brilliant to meet them and to, okay. you know, to, to experience being, you know, reading lots of very fine books. Yeah. Yeah, very much enjoyed the whole thing. And, Sounds you know, amazing. the discussions regarding which should win, you know, it, it, that, it was. It was a great experience. So yeah, um, yeah. So anyway, Amps a great place to go, and yeah, very lucky it, to have gone. It looks pandemic. beautiful. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just got there. Yes. You know, it's um, from the from the pictures that I saw. It looks absolutely incredible place. It, it, yes. It's. Um, I was a bit of the green eyed monster there. I think. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I, think I was quite aware that um, you know, I did post a few pictures here and there, and, and that yeah, know, it's, yeah. I imagine a few people were feeling like that. I certainly would have been if yeah. I'd seen someone else's pictures. Um, I. Recently, actually, just today, I've just listened to another podcast. Okay. Um, and Pete Takeda was on that. Oh, really? Actually. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, sa- he sounds like a really nice guy. Yeah, he's a great guy. I had some really yeah. good chats with walks and stuff with Pete. And we, we, you know, we climbed a bit while I was while we were there. So yeah. no, he's a yeah, yeah, really. And 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 Bernadette was great too. So so yeah, yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah Pete's a yeah, I'm, I'm, he's quite a character, so I should imagine. Okay, he sounded really. It's from what from what I heard, he was he was he's quite genuine. You know. Yeah, yeah, um, very much. Yeah, yeah, he sounds a really nice guy. Yeah. 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 Um, so how how long were you out there for? Just a, a week. So. so you so you got to explore quite a bit as well, and. Yeah, I um, I mean the the hills around Banff. There's, I ran a bit, and so went up some of the hills around Banff, and there's an awesome museum there, the White Museum. How it, brilliant painting exhibition on so I went there okay. and, and I um, went to Lake Louise I've not been to Lake Louise before which is a stunning place and, yep. and so lots of photographs um, and I feel lots of paintings of Banff and, and that kind of area coming on yeah so. sure yeah. So, so when so when you do paintings and things do you do, you do it from memory or do you no not at all do it? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah I take photographs and I, okay. I come home and I paint them at home um, I, I you know it's a night well yeah I mean it, sit out there and, no um, I don't I mean yeah it's it's I mean if I had more time maybe I would but but no I, I typically I take take photographs and do them when I get home it's, it's a yeah. cool way of sort of I mean you know I live in a very nice place I'm not complaining but you know okay. it's, it's a cool way of sort of getting back into the hills yeah sure home, if you know what I mean yeah oh that's that, that sounds great that sounds really nice moving on to the books that you've been kind of involved with or yes or you've written yourself, um, like the new one, Mountain Stories, that, yeah. that, that, that's out now. Um, there was a couple of more before then. 
um, like traceless and high inspiration. Yes. Could you talk a little bit about those? About what yeah, I, well, I, I, mean, ha I have haven't actually read them, okay. um, but um, I'd just like to know a little bit about them if well, that's okay. And sure, I mean the first book I wrote was Adventures in Mind, um, yep. that was published in two thousand and thirteen. Was by kind of exploration of, of the drive I had to, to, you know, at the time, the drive I had at the time to, to race lots and lots and to push myself in, in, in the mountains. Okay. Uh, and to kind of, yeah, so so that was, um, and when I, as I was writing it, it I, so I wrote about, I wrote a lot about mountain marathons. I wrote about climbing, um, okay. climbing routes, and mostly trad in the UK and places. And I also wrote about the Tour Divide, um, which is a long bike race, which kind of coincidentally starts in Banff. Okay. And this is at the New Mexico border, which I started uh, to race in 2010 and, um, or 2009, I forget. But um, around then, it was I was actually writing Adventures in Mind when I was when I went out to ride it, and not at the same time, obviously, but it was during that period of time. And yeah, I, and I I didn't finish the race. I kind of have a bit of a breakdown in Montana. It's a you know it would have taken <laughs> me about less than 25 days but 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 not far off okay and you know it's an intense you don't really sleep very much you ride your bike all the time and i'm like yeah i kind of lost my head a bit in montana and actually that's what got me started painting um the experience of i say that's what got me started painting i came back from the tour divide and i wanted to start painting <laughs> okay so okay. yeah i don't know i'd work that one out but um i'm not going to try but um so eventually mine was you know exploration of obsession if, yeah i mean and a, a personal obsession with the mountains is, is the subtitle and it's probably sure. quite a good subtitle really yeah so that was in mentioned mine that was published in 2013 and then um then came yeah I, so high inspiration kind of an exploration of um how the mountains inspire me and other people creatively and that's yep. got a backdrop of a run around the tour de mont blanc um that i did a few years ago well, back in 2000 and 14 or something like that i've done it a couple okay. of times i remember actually done the race um around the round, but um i did have an entry one year but i was injured so uh but yes um it's a great it's a great it's a great route so um the sort of tour de mont blanc so, so that looks about that um traceless yep. was a great book to work on last year and through lockdown early through lockdown i worked on it with um jeff cox it kind of it's a book that's inspired by fell running and in particular by um finding your own way in the mountains that was our theme really okay. that's in the jerry charney round which um which is a lesser known foul running challenge in the lake district which has got a focus on navigation and and um, leaving no trace hence the name traceless okay yeah. so so yeah and that's a collection of my my prose and poetry and, and jeff's pose and prose and poetry and also some of my artwork yep. and then okay. mountain stories which is which is the new one out now yeah, yes so I worked, I worked on that from, I started writing that in September last year and I wrote it because I realised in September last year I wasn't going to get to go to the Highlands last year, okay. Scot Scottish Highlands, and also that I think you could kind of see um, the second way. I'm a statistician for a living. I, you know, okay. I could kind of see the second, second you didn't have to be, um, you know, you could see the second wave coming and <laughs> yeah. we were yes. going to go into quite a dark winter. The writing of Mountain Stories, so Mountain Stories is a collection of journeys I've had um, in the Scottish Highlands and Islands, and um, and I was sketching the places as I as I wrote about them, okay. and it was kind of a way for me of re reconnecting with these places when I knew I wasn't going to get to go to them, and also when you know some you know, you know it, lockdown and darkness and, <laughs> and yeah, just sure. trying to yeah that's kind of escape really. I I, I wrote it yeah. early in the morning and um, to sort of take myself there. I, and, those, and, those, and those sketches feature in the book they do yes so yeah. you know sketches of ben hope and uh and Salak and sullivan and okay and uh yeah, and staffer fingles came on staffer and places so That's so yeah so i write about all these visiting all these places and and you know the times i spent there and it, yeah it was a i had a nice comment from a, a guy who um who uh, read, just read the book this weekend he was telling me and saying okay. that you know he felt that, he, that the book took him back to those places as well he he loves the highlands i think as much as i at least as much as i do i think um okay yeah so it was it's, That's... it's been nice feedback to get <laughs> yeah yeah um and i see that is it lucy wallace um yes. wrote the forward to it as yeah. well why did you why did you choose that and well why lucy i mean do you know yeah. i've not actually met lucy okay um i've you know, I've, I've wrote, read some of her, her her 
the stuff she's you know the the, the pieces she's written for magazines and things yeah, and all in sure. follow her on Twitter and um, yeah I could I mean she wrote a lovely forward and I kind of I, I asked her to do it because clearly knows the Highlands very well she's a mountain leader who lives on Arran yeah um, she lives on the Highlands yeah yeah. You know, president of um scottish ramblers at the moment and you know and yeah she's she seems she like i say i, I like to writing and, and she seems quite an inspirational woman and, and okay, so i asked yeah. her to write it she very yeah. kindly did great and i think it i mean i, I you know i'm very happy with the words she wrote for the book i think it sets it up wonderfully so i was very appreciative of that so have you got any other projects that you can talk about that are coming yeah. up um, um, I kind of do and I don't. I mean, I'm okay. I'm certainly not going to write any books about myself. I've done a lot of that, and okay. and I, you know, I've got obviously working with other people like like Faye. I'm really excited about Faye Latham's book, um, which is going to be yeah. It, it's a so Faye's a climber and a poet and an artist. Okay, she, she, she okay. Some stuff. So Faye's yeah. Faye's style. Well, in the, yeah, you'll have to. It's. I mean the the work she's the, the the material she's working on is is um is erasure art. So she's taking okay. she's taking old an old climbing book and making art out of it and poetry out of it. Um okay. so I think it's quite I mean I'm personally it's quite unique and, and very special. So yeah, I think she's like Faye Latham. Uh so yeah. One thing that I ask people um when they come on the show oh, is yeah. where is because the people that I interview are quite well travelled. Um, where is your favourite place? This place that kind of calms you and settles you, and you think, yeah, this is this is where I want to. This is where I need to be. Uh, that's a good question. Um, I can find calming places up a mountain. It's definitely a calming place for me. I've had just yeah. I mean, you know that it's it's not something you need, is it? But it, it's something I I find quite it's helpful for me in terms of. Um, peace of mind and stuff um yeah. you, but you don't you know i'd, I'd live without it and it's, it's a it's 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 a, it's a first world problem really you know so up a mountain uh, i'm not necessarily that picky really but you know and i don't know how this is going to sound but i i live at the bottom of the Ollie Chevin and um it's a place with okay. very nice trees in it very nice trails um gritstone boulders gritstone yeah. crags lovely sunsets and sunrises and i'm on it all the time walking running biking climbing you know so yeah i, I it's one of those places that you can easily take for granted but i don't because it's it's a really cool place so so yeah i mean if it's if it's anywhere it'll be the otley Shevin simply because it's so it's somewhere very close to home, home. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah yeah going back to when you were kind of I don't know, school age or something. Yeah. Were there any literature and books that you were kind of you kind of grew up with and, and wanted to read that kind of inspired you to get out more and and I want you know that kind of inspired you to go out. Um, do you know when I was younger in school age, I'm, I'm not sure if there was. I mean, I did read quite a lot when I was younger. I had I had a long period of time I didn't actually read very much when I was you know twenties upwards really. Um, but now I've lost. 10 years or something voraciously and I, I did when I was younger if there's any I mean I was yeah I've recently read um Paul Pritchard's new book and I know Paul was The old, Mountain Path you know, yeah 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 um and you know Paul oh, yeah I, I really love his writing and um Deep Play I remember reading when I was at okay. university yeah and yeah the st- you know it, the, the style of it all and, and his yeah it's he, he's a great writer so I you know it, if there's well there's quite I, I these days I, I read all sorts of books um so Rebecca Solnit is a is someone I, I really enjoy reading um she doesn't yeah she writes sometimes she writes about the outdoors but she doesn't really write about climbing okay. um, and I brought a load of books back from Banff that one or sure. two of which are about climbing but but actually a lot are about not have links to mountains and a lot of them are sort of environmental or or just yeah, sort of cultural sure. yeah so, yeah. Where can we, if anybody wants to buy your new book, where can they buy it from? Would you prefer it to be bought from your own publishing company or? Well, uh, it's. I mean, yeah. Really? I mean, it, it's. I think the two best places to buy it, and yep. you've got buy us here, littlepeak.co.uk website, um, with free postage and a cloth badge for all orders. Um, 
and and yours is much appreciated but you know also your your local bookshop and um, you can if it's not on the shelf you can you could order it and, and get it in a day from your local bookshop obviously it's available in other places online as well um but those yeah those two places I, i'd ask people to order them if they, yeah. if they feel inclined to order so moving on to um or going back to rather um to your paintings and, and yes. where why do you paint do you paint to sell them on or do you paint just for well, i don't sell many just paintings, because you so like to <laughs> okay um, yeah what, is it so, just for yourself yeah it's, it's certainly more for myself than anything else i mean i've just it was interesting actually because when i finished writing mountain drafting mountain stories um earlier this spring yeah. i had this compulsion to paint again and i hadn't, I hadn't actually because I, I, I have it in fits and starts really and and it hadn't it kind of left me for for well over a year and I, had, I hadn't really painted very much like so it came back okay. and, and this time I was painting quite differently to how I was before um with a palette knife and stuff and okay. it, all in oils and um I uh, started doing quite a few paintings in the Lake District <laughs> and then I started on the Cairngorms okay. um and then yeah and then and now I can feel quite I'm just finishing off a painting of Lake Louise actually in Banff and yes, um, I've seen that yes well, it, it looks... Banff National Park and um to be clear i mean when i paint i'm not generally writing either you know it's sort of it might <laughs> yeah i i do quite an eclectic mix mix of stuff i'll, I'll sort of I, but i don't do it all at the same time so it might seem like i do sure. loads of stuff that's yeah, that's, that's how it time. comes across it just looks like you've got yeah. a lot of things going on all at the same yeah, time yeah 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 no it's not all at the same time but, <laughs> I, but my head temporarily really tends to move around um to painting and writing i mean yeah i, I I'm, i've got a very mathematical orientated job so it kind of, okay. I think it probably keeps me in balance, really, head-wise. Okay. Um, but, yeah, the painting. So the painting. Um, I can feel quite a few of um, Banff and the air, those kind of areas. Banff's had quite a strong influence of, on me over the years. And um, okay. the, you know, the Banff Centre for Arts and Creativity is an incredible place to visit and to be, in, you know, to be inspired by. Yeah. So I'm kind of bottling the feelings I, I got uh, a couple of week or so ago in Banff. And, yeah, I feel quite – and I got some cool photographs um, – Okay. To, to paint so so yeah so um so yeah um, and probably the cairngorms as well some more some more okay. cairngorms painting yeah. is there anything else that you think i haven't asked or anything that you wanted to tell anybody um because um, i think we've covered all your books and where to get it from yeah. and what you do and and how much time you haven't got to do it and, <laughs> and all that sort of stuff. I, do, I don't sleep enough. Oh, ah, I don't, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I don't know if that's a good thing or otherwise. But, okay. Um, yeah. yeah. But no, that's that's great. I mean, oh, I, no, thank you. It's been I, great. I, I really, really appreciate you coming on the show. Um, okay. Well, I hope all goes well, um, and you sell loads of copies of your book. Thank uh, you. And and your um, any projects that you've got up and coming go really well as well. Thank you very much. And thanks very much for asking me on. So it's been okay. great to talk to you. Okay. Thank you very much. Right, cheers, Stuart. Take care. All right. Thank you. Take okay. care. Bye. Bye. I hope you enjoyed our conversation as much as I did. If you want to order the book, head over to littlepeak.co.uk and pick up a copy from there. Or you could go to your local bookshop and they can order it for you. I think if you order it from Little Peak, you might even get a little badge with it too. That's a nice little thing, isn't it?